This video is going to be going over the unit four day three notes from your probability packet. This is going to be pages 11 through 17. This is a long lesson. So take pauses throughout the lesson, especially to try the problems on your own first. It's going to be a lot more beneficial for you if you do that. All right, so we're going to make up some data. Suppose that we have a sample of 30 students and um, we are playing rock, paper, scissors and tossing a coin and just looking at our possible outcomes. So let's say we got these numbers going on. So 30 students, um, six won the rock, paper, scissors and the coin toss win, six lost rock, paper, scissors and coin toss win, six tied rock, paper, scissors, coin toss win. And we had similar numbers, five, two and six for the rock, uh, paper, scissors, win, lose and tie that lost the coin toss. So imagine all of these numbers, we're gonna get our totals. Anytime your table does not have your totals, you're gonna wanna add them up. So let's see, 14, 17, uh, 13, and you should have 30 total. All right, so with that data, let's answer a few questions. Find the probability of coin toss win or rock, paper, scissors win. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say our coin toss win, well, that's gonna be the probability of 17 out of 30. Rock, paper, scissors win, now we're talking 11 out of 30, so we want to get our totals. But in this scenario, we have an overlap. Um, when we do that, we, let me use a pencil here. Hold on a second. We do not want to count the six here, in this case, twice, right? So you got your coin toss wins, rock, paper, scissors wins, and this six is going to be overlap. So we always want to subtract that overlap. So we're going to subtract that six from those. And take a minute to answer that. And we're going to get our answers in fractions, decimals, and percents. So 1711 and negative 6, those are going to combine to 28 minus 6. And you get 22 out of 30. So the probability of one or the other happening, uh, winning rock, paper, scissors, or winning the coin toss is going to be 22 out of 30, um, which of course is going to be about 0.73 repeating. So we'll just say 0.73 or 73.3%. We want to get a little bit technical with those numbers. So all of those numbers are equally representable to represent those probabilities. And that's going to be your, your or scenario. Now let's move on to the next one. Given that a person selected one rock, paper, scissors, what's the probability that they're able to predict a coin toss, right, as a fraction, decimal, and percent? So on this one here, what you want to do is, since it says given, out of your givens, um, if they won rock, paper, scissors, we're only talking about these, okay? So I don't care about lose or tie. I'm just talking about out of this small group here. Now, who won? Well, there are 11 people that won the rock, paper, scissors. So that total is going to be 11. So the probability they're able to predict a coin toss, we're just looking at the six winners that won the coin toss in the column rock, paper, scissors win. And our fraction is going to be 6 out of 11. Now that fraction reduces to a decimal of about 0.5454, which is 54.5%. Either one of those is fine. Now let's look at the next question. Given the person selected did not win rock, paper, scissors, what's the probability that they're able to predict a coin toss? Well, not winning rock, paper, scissors is either losing or tying, right? Both of those are not winning. So really it's out of those not winners, we have 10 and nine, that's gonna be 19. So that denominator is gonna be 10 plus nine, which is 19. And the numerator is going to be just out of those that, again, won the coin toss. So we're looking at the coin toss wins 8 and 3 in that scenario. Now that's going to be 11 out of 19, which comes, uh, comes out to be about 57.89%. So 0.5789. And I'm going to round that to about 57.9%. And then finally, we have a question here um, just asking, are the events independent or not? 
So we want to know, is winning rock, paper, scissors in uh, winning a coin toss going to be independent? Now we know in theory that they are, right? We shouldn't. We know that the flipping a coin uh, should not affect the outcome of a rock, paper, scissors win. But in, in statistics, we want to look specifically numerically at what's going on. So what's going to happen is on the table, if knowing one event has occurred does not change the probability, the events will occur, they're going to be independent. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at your table. And we're going to look at your, your just your probability of coin toss, right? Probability of coin toss is 73.3%, 17 out of 30. Just the coin toss, we got a pretty big percentage, right? Excuse me, um, I'm looking at the wrong one. Um, the, yeah, the, the coin toss is 17 out of 30. That's uh, not 73%. Um, that's actually going to be um, a lot smaller. So 17 out of 30 is about 56.66%. So the probability of a coin toss win That's going to be 17 out of 30. And that represents about um, 0.566, seven, so about 57% or 56.7%. Now let's figure out what other number to compare it to. Again, two, two events are independent. If knowing one event has occurred, does not change the probability that the other event will occur. What that means is, well, is the, the probability of a coin toss winner given that they also won rock, paper, scissors. Now there's a more formal symbol for given, but right now just just given that they won rock, paper, scissors, the likelihood of them coin toss, if they are independent, it should be the same probability. Now I wanna look over here. Given the person selected one rock, paper, scissors, what's the probability they are able to predict a coin toss? Well, folks, that's not quite the same. It's a little bit less in this scenario, okay? It's gonna be six out of 11, which is you know about 54.5%. Now, they would be independent, 100% uh, independent, um, at least with our numbers, if these values were exactly the same. But since they are different, okay, since, since the probability of one and the probability of one given the other, since they're a little bit different, they are not independent. They are not independent since those values are different. So think about that for a minute. I'll zoom out and kind of let you take in the whole thing. And let's move on to the next page. All right. Now let's look at some sample data here, some different numbers, lots, lots of larger numbers here. Um, go ahead and pause. Read through this scenario. I want to see if you can uh, pause the video and, and check all these values and we'll, we'll answer the question in a minute. Okay, hopefully you got some numbers that, that represent these values here. Let me underline the percentages so we can just compare those. And uh, that should be consistent with what we did with one exception. You're gonna see this little uh, vertical bar. Now that vertical bar, that word means given. Okay, so what this problem is really saying, what's the probability that they won the coin toss given that they won the rock, paper, scissors? So my denominator for all of these is gonna be whatever is you know, this. So rock, paper, scissors win, 180. Rock, paper, scissors lose, 180. Rock, paper, scissors tie, 115. Rock, paper, not rock, paper, scissors wins is gonna be the combination of these two, lose and tie. And so your numerator, for those are just going to be what the overlap is. Okay. Now the first one is is the total. So we got 285 out of 475. Notice they're all um, different. I mean, you know, the, some of them are pretty close. Like these two are pretty close. These two are pretty close. But in general, they're all different. Which means that in this scenario, it says our coin toss win and rock paper scissors win independent. And we're still going to say no. And the reason is is again go back up to those first two. Okay. Coin toss win and coin toss win given rock, paper, scissors win 
they're not the same. They're close. So since the probability of coin toss win is not equal to the probability of coin toss win given rock, paper, scissors win, they're going to not be independent. Okay. So again, when, when knowing something affects the probability of the other. Okay. So when it changes up, they're not going to be independent. All right. So let's go through and um, fill out this table pretending that they were independent. Okay. Now we, we know that in, in, in reality, one should not affect the other. So let's see what that looks like on, on a, on a sample. Um, we know that 285 out of 40, 475, we calculated that over there. That's 0.6 which means that um, this probability would be 0.4. And if I were gonna make this table as an independent table, what I would do is I would take that, that the probability that's here and multiply it by your denominators down here. So I'm gonna say 0. 0.6 times 115, 0. 0.4 times 115, 0. 0.6 times 180, 0. 0.4 times 180, and 0. 0.6 times 180, which is the same thing, and 0. 0.4 times 180. Um, make those calculations, see what you get. And you should get the following. All right, so check those, make sure you're getting those same, same values. And now let's go through the calculations. Again, pause the video. Now see if you can calculate these and answer a couple questions at the end. Okay, well, what do you notice? They're all 0.6. Um, so when you do all those probabilities, they're all gonna be the same. And so in that case here, since these two are the same, since the coin toss win and the coin toss win given rock, paper, scissors win are both the same, you would say they're independent since those are equal. Now you notice that these problems here and you know, in eight, six and eight are different, right? Um, so the general formula here is for probability of for two probabilities to be independent. So if probability A and probability of B are independent, then what you're going to find is the following. Okay. You're going to say um, the probability of A should be exactly the same as the probability of A given the other one, given B. That's the general rule. Okay. So write that down, pause it, and then let's go to the next uh, page and just kind of summarize our findings. And then we'll do a check your understanding. All right, this problem, just a few fill in the bank blank questions here. Um, remember that and means both. So anytime you're doing, um, this is called a conditional probability. You're basically gonna do the both over the, the given. So you're always just gonna put what they have in common over the given. Um, so this little symbol means given. For independent events, um, knowing one event has occurred or has not occurred does not affect the probability of the second event. In other words, if the probability of one event is equal to the probability of that event given the other, and you can even extend it, um, the probability event given the complement of it, but it's not necessary. So we, we really just need that. So we would say they are independent in this situation. Also, one cool thing about independent events, just like flipping a coin, um, their probabilities multiply. So um, if you want to know the probability of two separate events that are independent happening, all you need to do is multiply their probabilities together. And in the case of independent events, you don't got to do any messing with the probabilities, the separate probabilities. The probability of, for instance, of flipping a coin and rolling a die and getting a three is one half times one sixth. It's that simple. Multiply them together. Let's look at notation. Um, so for this one here, um, A or B, remember this is the union. And that does mean or. This is the complement. And that means not. And that also means one minus. So whatever you're doing. Um, this is uh, the 
and and means uh, in in the case of uh, probability rules, uh, that's going to be the intersection. And a lot of times we think both. And finally, now we have our new conditional probability, and that's given. So I want you to pause the video, try these, and then we'll answer those questions at the end. So pause the video, boop, boop, boop. try the check your understanding, and then we'll come back and answer. OK, hopefully you've had a chance to check it. Let's look at letter A. Um, in this situation, it says, uh, we got the Pew Research Center randomly selected 100 mothers of ages 40 to 44 in 1976, and 1994, and 2014. And we asked each mother how many children they have. The two-day table summarizes the responses, two-way table. Suppose we randomly select one of the survey respondents. Define C as has four or more children. So that's C. And then S is going to be 1976. N is 1994, F is 2014. Now we don't need N and F and all that right now because this question just says find the probability C given, remember this is given, S. Well, what that means is given 1976, given that it was 1976, what's the probability a member had, uh, a mother had four or more children? Well, it turns out it's going to be 40% because 1976, there were 100 people in the survey. So 40 of them, that's your numerator, 40 of those mothers had four or more children. So 40 divided by 100 is 0.4 or 40%. So we would say given that it was 1976, the probability a mother had four or more children was 40% or 40% of the mothers in 1976 had four or more children. Okay, number two, or let it be. Uh, given the mother chosen was not surveyed in 1976, so now we're talking about the other years. We're talking about these two, not 1976. What's the probability that she has four or more children? Same question, but now we're dealing with this table. So now we have the, the two 13s, which is 26 out of 200. All right, the probability of four or more children and not 1976 would look like this symbolically. P parenthesis C slash given S with that little C meaning complement, not 1976. Um, and you do the intersection here. So C and not 1976 over not 1976. But the symbols aren't as super important as getting the answer. So make sure we, we know it's just the 26, 13 plus 13 over the 200, 100s, which is 200. And that gives you 0 0.3 or 0 0.13, which is 13%. And then finally, are the events surveyed in 1976 and four or more children independent? Well, they shouldn't be, because um, you know they're uh, they're, they're going to be wildly different numbers. But let's verify, okay? So on your table, you can do this in a couple ways. Just mathematically, what you're going to look at here is you're going to look at 1976, and if I'm if I'm looking at 1976 and four or more children, I can go either this way. I can do 100 divided by 300. And I can get the total 1976. And then I can also do the four more children given only with the 1976. So I can do 40 out of 66. And you can see those are different numbers. I can also go the other way. So I can say, hey, I can, I can check just out of the 1976, 40 out of 100. And I can compare that to the 33 out of uh, the 66 out of 300. So either way, those are different numbers. And I did it this way. I did the probability of it being 1976 was 100 out of 300, which is about 0.33. And then the probability of 1976 given four or more. Well, 1976, given that there's four or more children, so we're only talking about the 66 here. That's 40 out of 66. And those values are a lot different. And so since they are not equal, we'd say they're not independent to each other. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, the next video is going to be talking about how to work with um, events that are not independent and work with tree diagrams and plus ones. So stay tuned and there'll be another video to come.